So I'm continuing to learn about making vectors, and we're going to use professional software for that in this class. Let's see what we're responsible for. So we're on the 16th of October today. Today our sketches are due and your comments on someone else's sketches. You can comment on more than one. And we're going to start learning how to use vector programs, vector software. Um, we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator in this class. Next class we're going to continue working on assignment four. And then it is due a week from today. Right? The hard part is the black shape logo as a vector. The color is really, really easy. As long as you have a good black shape logo. So today I'm going to start it. I'm going to show you how to, how to start your vector. You can start playing with it on your own. I'll also show you the freeware version you can use of Illustrator. It's not quite as close a clone as PhotoP is to Photoshop, but it is helpful. And then a week from today, when it is due, we are also going to be printing it, right? along with two other artworks from the first half of class. So we also have to make stuff print ready. I'll be talking about that more next class. And a week from today is when you will give your group presentation. Because week nine, starting next week, that's our midterm week. Then on the 25th, a week from this Wednesday, that's when we'll have our exam. And you'll have to have all your stuff printed and up in the room for our midterm critique. So work on the logo, but don't take too long on it, right? Because we get a work day on Wednesday on it, and then it's due on Monday, ready to print. So we're going to jump right in. <clears throat> I'm going to go to after I've posted my proving ground, right? my sketches, and after I have commented on someone else's sketches, then I can move on to the assignment. And the first thing you do in the assignment is you pick which sketch approach you're going to actually use. <clears throat> so I like my dynamic approach. And because I'm the teacher, I don't need to really wait for your input. So I'm going to take this dynamic approach, and I'm going to use that as my basis of my logo. What are we going to turn in for the assignment? We need to turn in our refined sketch, right? the sketch we're going to use. And you can fix it a little bit if you want. Our black shape vector, and then a color version of our vector. So I can already post my refined sketch. In fact, I don't even need all of these sketches, because that's already improving ground too. Instead, I'm just going to put my refined sketch. And that doesn't mean it needs to be a better sketch. It just needs to be your clear intention for what you want to do. So I'm going to put that in. And one way you can refine it is to fill it in. right? Because remember, this needs to be a black shape. So sometimes for my refined sketch, notice how these all look very different than this. So I could open it up with Photoshop. Programs we know and understand. <clears throat> and then I can simply just use my black brush and fill it in to make sure that it makes sense as a black shape, that there aren't any outlines that I'm relying on for it to, to work. And I can even be really lazy about it and just use my paint bucket. This is still a sketch. This is rough, right? This is pixel-based. But that's what I'm going to try to do with my vector shape. That's what I want to make. <clears throat> now you also want to think, what is your intention with it? So I want it to be recognizable as a black cat with this kind of hooked tail. But I also have this kind of movement mark in here because I like all these, these kind of weird threatening shapes. It's almost like flames that it's making. So I want to try to get all that done. I think that will be cool. 
So I'll take a quick screen grab of this. I'm not even going to save it. But that will help guide what I'm doing. So once you understand more about turning these into black shapes, that might help inform which of your proving ground sketches you actually utilize. Because you have to simplify it a lot as a vector. <clears throat> All right, so now we are going to use Illustrator for the first time. And to do that, just like we've used Photoshop in the past for our landscape, for our creature, and we've started with sketches, I am going to close Photoshop, and we are going to right-click on our refined sketch and say open with Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator. It is the, the AI that's in your doc. So you can just drag your sketch down to it as well. All right, so now I have opened it within Illustrator. This is the Illustrator program. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And I'm going to show you kind of the lay of the land. We want to leave defaults. So first of all, if you hit Command-0, just like in Photoshop, it will fit the whole thing on the, the screen. It's floating on what's called an artboard. What's interesting, you can zoom out just like Photoshop, Command minus. If you use the Move tool at the top, that's the Move tool in Photoshop. This is called the, the Large Selection tool. I call it the Large Selection tool, and this is the Small Selection tool. If you grab the Large Selection tool, you can see that you can move your sketch off of the artboard. The artboard is just for where things will print. Right? So I'm going to move it back on the artboard. But it doesn't really matter. Resolution doesn't really matter in Illustrator. You can see this because this is pixel based. But when I make a vector, I'll just show you really quick. I'll just do it with the pen tool, the most basic way to make a vector. And I won't finish the cat. I'm just kind of doing the tail really quickly. Using these Bezier curves. Ooh. All right. Once you have a shape, then it can be filled with a color, right? And what you see are what are called anchor points, which then you can use the small selection tool to select, adjust, and change. So if I want to change this to a curve, I can. If I want to change this to a curve, I can. If I want to change this to a curve, I can. So there's a lot of understanding your components in an interesting way when you're using vectors. And you're making things and then you're going back and you're modifying them. Now, what's the difference between zooming in on this raster screen grab of my sketch and this vector that I'm creating? No matter how much I zoom in, it's always perfectly clean. No matter how much I zoom in, it's always perfectly clean. I'm in, I'm at 64,000% in zoom and it's perfectly clean. Hit Command-0 and get back out. Perfectly clean from here. So that's the versatile file we're trying to get to. Now, I just use what's called the pin tool. Remember, tools are always set up in a program in their most common use. So you're going to use the large move tool most. You're going to use it like a transform box. Right? I can stretch it. If I hold down Shift, it will keep its parameters. It's the opposite of Photoshop that way. If I don't hold down Shift, it will stretch and warp for me. And I could try to just use this and make it match my sketch. So how can I set it up for that? That was created using the Pin tool, which is the 
the old tool, the most common, if you just click and plot, you'll make an anchor. But you have to close the anchor, that what's called closing the path, so that they're fully contained. You can do that by stopping where you started. And when you stop where you start, you'll see that your, your cursor gives you a little circle next to it, next to the pin tool. So I just closed that path. Now I'll make a new path. I'll just make a square. It will fill it in as I go, but when I get to here, it will show a circle next to that little pin icon to show I'm closing the path. Because we want to design this all with closed paths. If you want to design it with shapes, just like we did our emoji, you have your vector shape tools here. So I could start with an ellipse, right? And then I can build onto that with a rectangle that I would use the the large selection tool to transform and change just like we would use transform and warp. And there's even some limited ways that you can transform with the large selection tool. Like you can right click and you can say transform. And you can do things like shear, which is like distort. But they're a lot less intuitive to use. So I'm going to show you a, a way to set it up that I think makes a lot of sense. And you just don't want to be really confused about what's happening. So as soon as you open your sketch up, this is what I recommend you do. Use the large selection tool and make that sketch large on your artboard. So it's front and center on your artboard. Even if it stretches parts of it off of it, the whole image should be on your artboard. And you can play with stretching it. See if you like it a little bit wider or a little bit narrower. Or if you want it angled a little bit, just like a transform box. I think I want a little, because this is dynamic, maybe I want this at a slight angle. And maybe I want it like that. Maybe that's more interesting. All right? Then you hit return. And you'll see that it shifts. So return and transforming boxes aren't the same here. Instead, you're just modifying things with the large selection tool. And whenever you click off of it, it's already modified. You don't have to hit return. Next, I'm going to look at the layer. There are layers in Illustrator, but they're just organizational. And I'm going to double click on the layer, just like you would for layer styles in Photoshop. And then I'm going to click on dim images to 50%. That's going to automatically onion skin it for me. Onion skinning is really, really helpful in Illustrator. Then I'm going to lock that layer because all that is is my sketch. And if I want to label it that, I can do that. Now I'm going to create a new layer just like I do in Photoshop with that little post-it plus sign at the bottom of the layer window. And now on this layer, which is going to be red, it's going to show all of my um, anchors and path outlines with red. Now I'm going to use this to build my shapes. And I'm going to start building them with either the shapes I used, for, like for the emoji, or with the pen tool, or with what's called the freeform pen tool, which a lot of you are going to want to use. And I'll show you how that works. So that's the fourth most common tool in Illustrator. For this, you can create and edit curved and straight lines easily, it says. And you can click on Learn More. This is not uh, intuitive. You have to get used to it. So you first, you click on what I call the freeform pen tool, but it's, they call it the curvature tool. It lets you draw and edit paths and shapes using smooth and anchor points. So if you hold down Shift, you will get to this tool, right? Click anywhere on the artboard to set your first point. So let me try, I'm gonna set it at the tail. Click. Click again to create a second point. Click, right? A line segment is